Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my corner of the internet. My name is Jason and today we are playing some more Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall. Last time, I don't remember if we were actually dispatched to go do this mission, but uh, we, we came into the monastery of Belebron to uh, rescue um, a cleric, I believe by the, by the name Rayoga? Was it? Rayoga! And it was a cleric, yes. So we're basically walking through this dungeon in search of this cleric. And, uh, you know, along the way, we're gonna slay things, loot things, uh, you know, smash things, look at things, you know, all sorts of things that we're gonna be doing with things. So, uh, that's what we're doing today. Now, uh, I guess I didn't realize last time that I had basically come into a corner and I'm probably gonna need to backtrack to somewhere I don't know um, so we're gonna have to basically run run around for a little bit I'm probably gonna have to go ahead and make some cuts obviously because I'm not gonna show you guys me ha running around going I don't know where to go so as soon as I locate a new location in this dungeon for me to go ahead and explore which is actually let me see here we got a path right here and we, we can drop down right here which we've already arrived at I'm gonna cut back in so hey welcome back guys we're we're at a we're at a new place. So so nice of you to join me. So we're gonna go ahead, like I said, go ahead and slay things, um, and then you know find Rayoka and return him or her back to the Temple of Arcane. Now, uh, yeah, I I pretty much made up my mind at this point. I uh, am getting uh, a little bit annoyed with the whole um, having to feed thing, especially after that uh, dropping down to the four HP in the the last. No, it wasn't the last episode. It was the episode before that. Uh, Especially after that, I'm like, no, nope, 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 nope. We are going to work on that cure. So, uh, as soon as I get back to, we'll say, civilization, the lock has nothing to fear from you. Uh, I think we have what a Deidroth on the other side. It looks like a Deidroth. Either that or it's an orc. No, I'm pretty sure it's a Deidroth. So, we're gonna go ahead and switch out our weapon to something that can actually harm the Deidroth. There we go. Our nice double, double broadsword. Uh, and we're going to, uh, open the door using Steve, because we like to be able to- We like practicing our magical skills. Bashing the door is great and all, but it- it should be a last resort. It does not unlock, of course not, because I'm not in grab mode. Oh, wow! Even with Steve! Oh, wait, wait, it was a mummy! I saw the green, and I assumed it was a Deidroth. Oopsies. My bad, yo, my bad. Uh, alright, so let's just go ahead and- walk on into here and explore down there so that we have a whole new area but yeah i think uh, i think it's about time to go ahead and get to uh, get this uh, this thing cured i'm getting a little bit anno oh this is really okay i can climb down cool that's really steep um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get cured of uh, the lycanthropy uh we have been down here haven't we yes we have we just haven't connected the map so i'll run over here have I been in this room before I have already explored? Explored. I've already explored that way, Derry. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and run back and find the. Uh, there was another path I hadn't explored. We're gonna go over there and well, explore that way, and we're gonna keep exploring the, all of the ways until we get to the end. Now, uh, I'm going to actually. Uh, I was thinking about this. I'm actually gonna uh, uh, miss these large dungeons because you know I played through Arena. Big dungeons, very fun dungeons. I uh, got into Daggerfall, big dungeons, not as fun, but still big dungeons. And uh, I know that Morrowind doesn't quite have as large of dungeons, so I'm I'm like going to be a little bit disappointed to to be missing the large dungeons. But you know, that actually brings brings me to an, an, another th uh, another thought that I I have, and um, I I don't know I. I I feel like I talk a lot about the entire series as a whole, and, uh, you know, I'd like to focus all my talk on Daggerfall, but honestly, with how as repetitive as the game is, and with my- I'm very sorry, I, my- I don't know what came over me last time, my boredom talk, um, it's not exactly something I should be sharing with everybody. Oh, I remember you, yeah! Or, actually, weren't you a guy last time? Yeah, I think you were. Uh, anyways, you're dead now. Um, you know, you know, with things that are as repetitive as they are, you kind of have to search for other, we'll say, relevant things to, uh, to chit-chat about. And I think that, um, 100 gold, so-so, for 0.25 kilograms. 
I'll take it. I can always drop it later. Uh, you know, you kind of have to search around for different topics to uh, discuss because, you know, you just you run out of things to say about the game, especially when it's uh, this repetitive. Um, so, I, I'm sorry. Um, actually, that actually makes me think of a, something. If you guggers have a question or something maybe you'd like me to check out in Daggerfall, um, something I may, uh, an element of the game I have uh, n maybe uh, missed, uh, not necessarily something I can't do yet, because I, I do know that there's some stuff I can do with uh, the different guilds that I have not uh, yet unlocked, so I am working towards those things, uh, but... You know, something that I have access to that I've missed. Yeah, let me know about it and I'll, I'll be sure to check it out. But anyways, the comparison I was going to, or not the comparison I was going to make, the discussion, or the thing I was going to say about uh, Daggerfall and the rest of the series is I find that people put too much of an emphasis on uh, sequels being exactly like their predecessors. And uh, I'm not... You know, I, I, I used to think the same way. I'm like, oh man, you know, uh, this is what defines the game. And you kind of do want to have some sim similarity, of course. Um, but I find when a sequel basically just makes a marginal improvement over the previous game, uh, that actually kind of bothers me. Because I, I'm like, you know what, if I wanted to play the exact same game, I would go ahead and just play the same game. I feel like a sequel should be a different enough experience that it does not replace the previous game. So, for the example, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, let's bring up the, we'll say the Assassin's Creed series. Now, there's a lot, there's a lot to those games. Actually, I actually enjoy those games as repetitive as they can be. Um, but, let, let's be honest, they don't make huge leaps and bounds, we'll say, from one installment to the next. You know, sometimes you do get those, those occasional ones, but there's a lot of times where, you know, especially during, we'll say, the, the run where it was basically just annualized, you know, you have those small little things, and, um, maybe, actually, maybe, maybe it's not the best example. Oh, yeah, it might be. Actually, that's probably not the best example. We'll, we'll, we'll keep running with it for now, though. And, you know, with each installment, they add some new features in, and it kind of makes the old version obsolete. So the only reason you'd play the old one would be, for, like, say, for story reasons or just the atmosphere. But uh, ultimately, gameplay-wise, it's, like, it's just, it's a better game in every way. Uh, Call of Duty, that would prob probably be a better example. You know, in each game, they kind of go ahead and, and we'll say, add more to the game. And it, people just stop playing the, the previous installments. Now, someone's going to go ahead and point out that, you know, there are some minute differences here and there. And this Call of Duty is the best one and yada yada. Uh, but my point, if, if you can try to understand, I, I'm, I'm trying to make a general point, so please just try to look at the general idea, is that uh, I don't feel like the, uh, a sequel should make a previous game obsolete. I think that if you're going to make a sequel, it should be different enough gameplay-wise while still being similar, so you can still sort of tell, okay, that's th this game is this game, it's from this series, um, while at the same time, being different enough that you're not like, well, there's no point in for me playing the um, the previous game anymore. And so when I when I look at like say the difference between uh, Arena and Daggerfall, uh, you know what? I feel like there wasn't uh, enough of, uh, of a there there was uh, there was a differentiation. It's it still feels kind of like the same game. Um, but I think like there's a big a bigger difference between let's say like Morrowind and Daggerfall. Let's go ahead. And look, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and talk about Morrowind versus Daggerfall, just for, just for a bit. Uh, now since I haven't played uh, Morrowind and someone who's watching this video might not be familiar with Morrowind, I'll keep things very we'll say uh, high level. We're, we're gonna make some sort of we'll say higher level comparisons. Um, Daggerfall definitely has more. Am I crouching? Oh no, I'm like the ceiling's higher. Um, Daggerfall's definitely got, we'll say, a lot more, we'll say, dungeon crawling. There's a couple other little mechanics and stuff that uh, are present in Daggerfall that are not present in Morrowind. And it actually, while the two games can play very similarly, they are very different experiences. Um, Daggerfall's a lot more about dungeon crawling. Morrowind has a lot more of uh, open world sort of exploration. It's got a lot more, uh, I want to say... It's got a lot more handcrafted quests, so as a result, um, you know, there might be a little bit more of a, a story uh, focus. There, there's, there's, there's several little differences, but um, Dagger Falls a lot more dynamic. You know, everything in Morrowind is static. So, what uh, my point here is, is I like that in a way because it's... 
Daggerfall uh, is a, a great game for what it does, and then Morrowind's a great game for what it does, but neither replaces the other. Now, you could go ahead and say, well, you know, if, if you prefer one game over the other, you can say, well, I prefer this game. Well, that's fine. But I'm talking about when a game basically just makes solely, just makes improvements over the last one and makes the, the old one obsolete. I don't like that. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain. It's, it's, it's... I, I feel like, you know, if you're going to make a new game, you should make a new game. And, you know, on, on, in that way, I, I'm kind of coming to grips with, you know what? I'm okay with Skyrim, the way it is. Uh, I would have liked something different. So, it doesn't get rid of, we'll say, the disappointment I have, but I, I'm a little bit more okay with it when I, when I look at it from that perspective. Like, yes, they changed the mechanics up. They did, we'll say, dumbed a lot of things down. They fundamentally changed the core experience of the game. And... I'm disappointed because it's in a completely different direction than what I would have liked. I would have liked, uh, you know, something closer to Morrowind. I would have liked something more in that direction. Uh, but ultimately, I'm kind of glad it's a different game. Uh, you know, I, I find people are... It's so strange to... I don't know, it's, it's, it's so strange to me because I, I often hold, we'll say, two different completely, two completely different views at the same time. And, um, you know, sometimes they, they could be seen as sort of conflicting views and people will start crying, you know, uh, cognitive dissidence and all that crap. But the truth is, it's sometimes it's okay not to have a black and white answer. So it's, it's okay to be mixed on things. Uh, you don't have to always work things out and have, like, this solid answer. I'm okay with being kind of... In that sort of place where I'm like, eh, you know what? Sometimes I'm cool with Skyrim, sometimes I'm not. It's okay to be in flux. It's okay to accept, we'll say, new information and change your mind from time to time. Uh, now that's gonna sound like I'm some sort of like horrible flip flopper who like doesn't stick to what his any of his beliefs, but uh, I I mean that more so when it doesn't you know pertain to others' well being. You know, when it comes to like opinions of media and stuff. It's, you don't need to jump onto a fan club. It's okay to be your own person and not be defined by what you like. And I think this conversation is going into a very different direction than I originally intended. So, uh... I don't know. At this point, I'm kind of like, do I keep going? Because at this point, I'm just ranting, and it's becoming less about Elder Scrolls and more about... fandom in general? I don't know. Should I keep going? Yes? No? Show of hands? I don't see any hands going up, so maybe I should stop. Jason, that might be because you're playing the game and the people are not actually watching you yet. Yes, yes, Brain, I know this. You don't need to point it out to me. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and rest here for... Uh, we'll do, uh, three hours. Just a few hours. Oh, uh, enemies nearby. Oh, and he doesn't see me, though. Or she. No, that's a he. No, that's a she. Uh, that's yeah, definitely a she. Sorcerer just died. And what are you? You're an elven broadsword. I could take you, or I could take the gold, which is 180 gold pieces. I think I'll just take the gold. We'll leave the sword. It is of no use to me. Yeah, yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and drop that uh, topic, because I don't really see any point in, we'll say, really continuing it. Basically, yeah. My point is, don't let- My point is, be your own person, form your own opinions, and don't let your interests define who you are. You, you are a person first, and then you're, you are a person who has interests. It's, it's not that you are... That, that's actually kind of why I'm a little bit uh, hesitant to the uh, term, like, um... I don't know, even something as simple as, like, gamer. It's like, uh, I'm a gamer. Well, no, I'm, I'm a... I, uh, I am me. I am Jason, and I like games. Uh, I use... Uh, I'm looking for fish sticks, there we go. Yes, I'll use the term gamer, because it's sometimes it's just quicker to say, yeah, I'm gamer rather than, you know, the, the whole long-winded, I am Jason and I enjoy video games. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just quicker just to say, oh, hello, underwater zombie thing. Uh, wow, you hit hard. A z oh, it is a zombie. All right, awesome. A zombie was carrying a bunch of gold, so I'm going to go ahead and take that gold. Um, go down a little bit. There we go. I'm a little bit wounded. Uh, do I have, I do have my training healing spell, right? There we go. We'll use that. Doesn't cost a whole lot of magic and allows me to stay, uh, stay healed up without using too much magic, which is a very redundant statement. Good job, Jason, repeating yourself. Sorry. Uh, is that just cosmetic? 
I think that it might just be cosmetic. That is just cosmetic. Okay. It's a dead end. We're out of here. Yeah, I've been here. This is the same place. I That's right. I, well, I knew it was familiar before, but I forgot that this was... I thought I had explored the water after I had come back, so I thought this was a new pool of water, but turns out it's just the same pool of water. So, my, my bad. Alright, I need to find somewhere else. Uh, to go. Uh, did I go up there? I did, but I didn't explore out that wing. Okay, so we're gonna go that way. So we're gonna go straight. Uh, but yeah. So, yeah, that's, 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 that's basically it. I, I find... It, especially because you get, it tend to get a label, right? And when you get a, that label, uh, then, um... People tend to sort of judge you on that. It's like, oh... Okay... Yeah... You're a gamer... You know, I... I, I <laughs> there, there, there's... And, and while gaming has become more... Uh, definitely a lot more mainstream than it, it once was, uh, it does still, you know, to some people still hold a bit of that, we'll say, stigma to it, you know? Uh, like, like, think about it. I'm a, I'm a big bearded guy who plays games in his basement. Not his mother's basement! It's my, this is my own basement. This is my house. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, there, there's still that, you know, I, I kind of do f sort of fit a profile of that, I guess you could say, but, uh, Yeah. And it, like I said, it's it's not it's not because I'm I don't know it's 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 weird. It's kind of like you know people who um, like who get tattoos. It's a lot of people, you know, that you go to a job interview. It's actually a good idea to cover up your tattoo, not because you're like I'm ashamed I have a tattoo, but honestly, even without thinking about it, sometimes people will just um, that will affect their decision on whether they're going to hire you. They see tattoos, they automatically associate you with a group, even if it's uh, subconsciously, even if they're not even thinking about it, that might automatically put them off because it is, uh, you know, it's conditioning. You know, if somebody's had an experience uh, a lot in their life, uh, or they've seen something repeatedly, it is, uh, what, what's that called? Uh, uh, operant conditioning? I'm trying to remember the actual psychological uh, um, terms for that, but basically, it's, uh, you know, it's a... Not everyone is self-aware enough to say, Oh, I have been conditioned to think this. I need to make a conscious effort to not think like that. Um, so sometimes, uh, unfortunately, you have to kind of pick your battle sometimes and choose when you want to disclose certain things or be labeled a certain way because it will help you. But anyways, then we've, we've gone into like, I don't know, life tips or something. What I don't know where, where, where we were going with all this, but... Um, yeah, there, there's that. I'm, I'm just talking, we're, here, welcome to my corner of the internet, where we pl play Daggerfall and just talk about random crap. Seriously, I should do a talk show. <laughs> Would anyone watch a talk show with me? Serious question, seriously. I, I, I've been playing around with the idea of doing, like, um, like, just, just a podcast or something, uh, for a little while, but I'm like, the problem with the podcast is I, I would need somebody, I, I wouldn't want to do it alone. Or would, would it be cool alone? I could, I could, I could, you know, have a split personality and I could just talk with myself. That's pretty much what I do now anyways, right? Uh, I don't know. What, what would you people think? If I did a podcast and I wasn't able to get, or wasn't able to get anyone else, would anybody still be interested in just listening to me talk? That's, that's, that's weird. Anyways. Uh, let's, let's, let's go. And just slay this, uh, this gargoyle. Cause, cause I've got, you know, I've got, I've got, I have friends! I promise I do! Just, we, our schedules don't always match up and it's hard to get, uh, people on board. Um, and, and I, I tend to be very picky about, uh, my, my stuff. Like, I agree some of my content is not always the best. It's actually quite often not the best. I'm not happy with it. But I, I'm kind of very picky with it. So, if I had someone else on, I'm like, it, I would have to like interview them. I have to be like, okay, I need to know if you can hold a conversation because I don't want I don't want you messing up my crap because this is my name I'm putting on it. And and there we go. There's the businessman side of me coming out. Okay, we've already explored this. I need to find a new place to go ahead and explore. So I will be back with you guys momentarily. All right, and we've discovered uh, one area I have not uh, explored over here, so we're gonna go ahead and march on over there and see 
uh, what's hiding and hopefully that leads to another large sprawling area of the dungeon because I'm not too sure where else to go and no please don't be a dead end do not be a dead end don't don't you dare don't you dare oh yes it's another hallway oh uh, no 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 it is another hall okay uh, at first I was like, no, I've already explored this, explored this area. I've explored it already. I don't want to explore the area again. All right, uh, let's see what lies down these stairs. Is it uh, Rayoka? Because I'd really like to find Rayoka and get out of here. However, the fact that they gave me 23 days kind of leads me to believe that um, they, they expected me to take a while on this one. No, no. No, it's a dead end. I must. Oh, what are you? I haven't seen you in it before. In a before. I've never seen you in it before. Uh, you're too heavy and not worth the gold. All right. So we've uh, come to a place that we've. Um, yep. Okay. That's 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 a dead end. Right on. Awesome. All right. So once again, I need to go ahead and find a new place to explore. Ah, the the joy of dungeons in Dagafall. I'll be right back. All right, and we're back here over in this little section of the uh, dungeon. Uh, this there's a whole little section over here of little paths that I have not explored, uh, but I think I explored all this part. So let's go ahead and take a right hand turn into Destiny, or you know, just this this wing of the dungeon. Ah, all right. Let's see. Uh, I've not explored that way, so let's go ahead and save before I go down there in case I get killed. I can't remember. Uh, no, I think I, I anchored. Yes, I. No, did I? I can't remember if I put an anchor. Ah, oh, darn it. Gargoyle. Switch out weapon. Run backwards. Slay. Gargoyle. Be happy. Switch back to other sword. Cool. I'm not even. I don't even care what sword I grab anymore. I'm just like, all right, this sword is needed for this enemy. Let's just grab it. Ah, uh, man, I wish I had some, like, enchanted arrows. Actually, that, that's, that's a, a, a question. Do you need... Is it... I think it's dependent upon the... Is it on the bow? I think it's dependent on, upon the bow that uh, is used, and not necessarily on the, uh, the arrow that is fired. So if I got myself... I'm using a magic bow, but I don't think that counts. I would need, like, a fancy bow or something. But then again, I haven't seen any fancy bows. There really only seems to be one type of bow. So, somebody with archery, how do they succeed in these dungeons? Do they need to use magical? Wait, what? Where am I? Oh, no. Okay. I I'm good. I'm good. No don't worry. Uh, do they need to use, like, magic arrows or something? Is I think that's something. Is that a thing? I think it's a thing. It may be a thing. Just, just, just might, I think. I don't know. Uh, I'll need to look into that. That's, that's, that's a question to put on my notepad of questions. Because, like I said, I want to know, and it is a question that I have. Because I was thinking about that, I'm like, uh, every shot I fire, basically, is completely ineffective. I basically need to use my, um, my sword or my magic to get past that. Uh, wait, where am I? I'm here. Wait, I, I've gone... Did I go downstairs and I didn't even re I didn't even realize I went downstairs. I'm I'm so in my own little world right now. I'm just like, I'm walking through this dungeon, and, and I'm like, wait a second, where am I? Uh, Jason, you're such a silly. Um, but yeah, how does an archer get uh, through Daggerfall? Do they need to st like diversify and use different weapons? That would kind of suck. You know, you you want to do one thing. But then you can't because you just can't because you, the choice you chose is pathetic. Like even unarmed can be useful against um, you know anything in the game basically. So let's go ahead and use buoyancy and fish sticks. And into the water we go. And there's another zombie. Let's slay the zombie. Come on, zombie guy. Just die quickly, please. Thank you. Let's loot the zombie and uh, explore this. Now, I notice this this dungeon tends to use a lot of repetition. Like, I know that's a thing that it, dungeons tend to use repetition, but uh, I'm noticing. What the? <laughs> okay, I was not expecting to find her there. Is that is that? 
Would you like a drink? Oh, no thanks, I've got enough. <laughs> Thank our KU came. I've been searching for the way out for close to a week. I'll pull you back to the temple. All right, lady. <laughs> All right, so she's just down in the middle of the water, still holding a tray of drinks or something. Like, okay, wh whatever, sure, why not? <laughs> oh, Daggerfall, you, oh, you make me laugh. You, you, you bring a smile to my face. All right, let's try to rest for a little bit, uh, so that we can go ahead and uh, 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 basically warp our way out of here on oh, imp. <laughs> an imp. Big deal. Slim pickings, rip and tear. Oh wait, no, that's a cyber demon. Whatever. Sorry. Uh, if you don't know what kind of, well, say, psychotic break I had there, or what kind of insanity I was spouting, I was quoting the Doom comic, which is an absolutely fantastic read, and you should totally read it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I've got 94. I can cast Tropolet with that. Um, before I do, though, I want to save the game. I think I just did, but I want to save it again, just because I'm not sure if I uh, actually have an anchor. And I do. I do have an anchor. Yes! All right, we are done this quest. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, was it in, from Linisa? I think. Let me check my log here. Uh, the Order of RK. Uh, yeah, return to Linisa. All right, uh, let's, let's leave and head off to Linisa. Awesome! We have completed this quest, and this makes me happy. Ends cautiously, foot good. Begin. You are entering Linisa, you're feeling fortified. Excellent. I need to find the Order of RK, which is, let's see, we've kept coming on the, yes, we come on the west side. And we were off on to, we were at a destination that was to the west of Linisa. So that does, that, that's an, uh, another instance where we seem to have come in from the, the correct direction. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and run on down to the southeast, to the Order of RK, uh, return our cleric, and that will probably do things for today. I'm swimming. Man, this is one torrential downpour. We've got major flooding in Lenisa. Maybe I should reconsider uh, setting up shop in here, like, you know, living in Linisa. Well, I did say I wanted to get a ship first, so I guess that, that's probably a good idea. Oh, Acolyte and good Ryoka, it is good to have you back in the Order of RK again. I had feared the worst, to be honest. Do I get a reward? That's it? Yep, no reward for you. Just, just... Thanks for doing something good. All right, that's awesome. That's all right. I, I looted a lot of stuff while I was in that uh, dungeon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, gonna go ahead and read a book. We'll read a book, uh, and next time we're actually gonna try to get uh, cured of lycanthropy because I'm getting fed up with that uh, little limitation on myself. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, pick out the book. If that doesn't interest you, then I will see you next time. Uh, but if it, if it does, then. Uh, well, after I've rummaged through my inventory to find a book to read, I'll be right back. All right, today we're reading The Sage. Crackle, snap, hiss, flicker, bright, dim. The fire in the hearth provides light and heat. Neither seem to affect the old man. His reclining figure stares into the flames, and flames reflect black back, eh, back from his deep, dark eyes. Indigo blue robes reflect and yet absorb the firelight, and highlights of golden threads twinkle as the flames flicker. His beard and hair are long and snowy white. In the firelight, they almost appear to be ethereal. I think I read that right, yes. Ethereal. E ethereal. I was right, okay. Like that of a godling. At his side is a tall pointed hat, which is the same color as his robe, and also twinkles with highlights of gold. The face is lined with age, yet almost appears youthful. Wisdom and intellect exude from his personage. Personage. This is the sage who is known in all of Tamriel as the champion and counselor to all users of magic. His thoughts wander and he remembers... Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Gyren Varden Groet was born to a poor and humble Breton family in the village of Moongard. The only child of Frida and Horstel of Varden Groet, entered life during a rare eclipse of Tamriel's moons. 
It was soon apparent that he was unusually gifted in the magical arts. He was found levitating the family dog when he was only a year old. Most Bretons have a great talent for magic. But as he grew, Gairon displayed a talent far greater than that of his peers. The village wizard began to take an interest in young Gairon, and soon took him under his wing. In spite of the young man's proclivities for being rowdy, the old wizard Grundinger, Dr Grundingler, I think that's about right, okay, we're just gonna skip that one, liked him and worked hard to teach him the magical arts to the extent of his own skills. Finally, the day came when Grundingler could teach Gairon no more. The young mage had surpassed his master, and he was somewhat unsettled with the apprentice's mage, apprentice mage's questions about life, death, and immortality. Grundingler called Gairon to him and gave him a letter addressed to Mor Morkletter, the guild magister of the mage's guild in Shornhelm. The young mage told his parents of his fortune, packed his meager belongings, and set out for the journey to Shornhelm. After many months of travel through the foothills of the Kuralian Mountains, Gairon arrived at the gates to the great city-state of Shornhelm, high in the mountainous terrain of High Rock. After the life of a quiet Breton village, Shornhelm was a wonder to Gairon. Gairon? Uh, we'll stick with Gairon. He explored the city from one end to the other, and eventually found the Mages' Guild. Presenting Grundingler's letter to Morkletter, Gairon was received warmly. Morkletter explained to Gairon that he would need to be tested before any commitment to further training could be made. After a night of rest and meditation, Gairon was shown into the main hall of the Mages' Guild, which was now filled with magic users of all kinds. It was very quiet. The young mage felt as if his heart was in his throat as he approached the Council of Three, the leaders of the mages in this city-state. Morkletter rose and explained to Gairon that the various tests he would be subjected to to prove his worth as a mage. The youth then turned and left the council chamber, the eyes of many mages on him, and went forth to complete the tasks that had been defined for him. Returning to Shornhelm several years later, Gairon was admitted to the Mages' Guild and shown to the Council Chamber where he was met by Morkletter. The ancient mage reviewed the journal entries, the artifacts gathered, and most especially the spellbook entries presented to him by Gairon. An expression of amazement spread across the old wizard's face. There had never been a novice to accomplish what Gairon had during the testing. Morkletter then called a full session of the guild presenting Gyron as a full wizard. Gyron remained with Morkletter for several years and studied hard. In private session several years after the testing, Morkletter admitted to Gyron that the guild had at Shornhelm could teach him no more and that he should seek further enlightenment at the Crystal Tower on Somerset Isle. After packing his possessions once again, Gairon set off on another long journey. He arrived at the Crystal Tower several years later after having traversed the province of Hammerfell, where he had many adventures. Traversed the province of Hammerfell. Okay. My bad. Met many other mages, uh, mages with them, I guess? He heard stories of wonderful plants that, when combined with other elements, could restore life to those dead, prolong life to those yet living, and in the proper combination bestow immortality on the user. Gyron was always quick to advise and guide mages who were less experienced than himself. He loved being able to help. He made many friends and stories began to spread across the land about this exceptional user of magic. When he entered the Crystal Tower, he was greeted by several mages, all clamoring for his attention. His reputation had preceded him. However, the crowd hushed and parted at the arrival of a very imposing figure dressed all in indigo blue robes trimmed in gold. Wearing a high pointed hat and carrying the most beautifully carved staff Gyron had ever seen. The Elder of the Council of Wizards, Eslander? Esl 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 Eslander. I think we're gonna go. We we're just gonna go with that. Looked closely at the young wizard, nodded, and uh, turned to walk back into the tower. Without delay, Gyron followed him. The audience that followed stunned the young mage. Eslander explained to him that Gyron's coming had been foretold for many years, and he had been expected. The mages had been told by the gods that one of their own would come along to provide guidance, knowledge, and aid. 
Gyron was uh, that promised champion and leader. Gyron was confused and uncertain. How could he be such an extraordinary person? What must he do to fulfill his destiny? Many questions spilled from him to which Estlander could not provide the answers. The elders suggested that Gyron stay with him in the Crystal Tower for a while and study. This he did. The day finally came when the Elder admitted to Gyron that the Crystal Tower could no longer provide anything new, and that he needed to travel the lands of Tamriel and seek the wisdom and knowledge. The Elder sighed and told Gyron how sad he was that the Crystal Tower was losing him, but that his destiny must be fulfilled. With this, the Elder presented Gyron with a package wrapped in the same beautiful indigo blue as the Elder's robes. Gyron was told to take the package with him open it only when he was at least a day's travel from the Crystal Tower. That sounds fishy. Hmm. After a long day's walk, Gyron set up camp in a beautiful glade next to a brook of crystal clear water. Finally, he thought, I can open the Elder's package. As he untied the golden cord that had bound the package, he found that the wrapping was not wrapping at all, but an, an exquisitely tailored robe identical to the one worn by the Elder. As he opened the robe, a high-pointed wizard hat popped out of the package, and with a whoosh and pop, the same intricately carved staff that the Elder had carried appeared. A note from the Elder advised that the garments were indestructible, and that the staff had many magical properties for Gyron to discover. It went on further to explain that from this day forward, Gyron would be known as the Sage. Tired from his walking, and with an inner glow of accomplishment, the sage settled down for the first night of his long pilgrimage across the lands. This is a long book. After many months of further travels and adventures, the sage returned to Moongard and was warmly welcomed by the villagers, and most especially by his parents. Frida and Horstel, news of his... Uh, sorry, there's a period there. News of his coming had preceded him, and the whole village had worked hard to build and furnish a cottage for the mage. After a festive banquet that evening, Gyron retired to his new home. The sage settled into his life outside Moonguard. He received many visitors who have traveled from near and far to seek his guidance, help, and training. The years passed. It was not long before first Horstel and then Frida died. The sage was devastated by his loss. In his grief, he swore to de dedicate the rest of his life to defeating death, so that grief like his could be avoided by others. He returned to the Great Library at the Crystal Tower and researched the many flowers, herbs, and plants that he had heard about and seen during his travels. In his cottage, he labored tirelessly over the spellbooks, vials, and collections of flora from all over the lands. I, I got a feeling, uh, I, I got a suspicion about where this is going. He tested the potions on himself. The years went by, but the sage seemed not to age anymore. At some point, he had found the right combination in, in his experiments, but could not determine which combination it had been, as the change had been most subtle. He had secured a life without end, and the years continued to pass. Mages came to him for help, which he freely gave. The sage settled into his life of advising and guiding, and the years continued to pass, unfortunately. His fame became so great that the call for his help, help was unmanageable. He reluctantly packed his possessions for the last time and moved far into the Corallian Mountains and built a magical fortress. Only the most worthy magic user could gain access and help from the Sage. However, however, following his heart, even today, the Sage often leaves his mountain abode and travels the land helping young mages gain experience and to grow. Dot dot dot. Snap! Crackle. The firelight flickers. The old mage stirs as the memories fade and flicker like the firelight. Bang, bang, bang. Echoes from the pounding knocker on the great oaken doors of the fortress. The sage rises and heads for the doors, knowing that yet another mage in need has found him and is worthy of help. That is uh, actually that's a cool story. Uh, I, I was I was waiting for it to take a dark turn, but no, that's just a, that's just a really cool story. I like that one. The sage. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, and I've already saved, but I'm gonna save again just because I'm paranoid. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and save the game. Uh, next time, we're gonna go ahead and sell some things, you know, do some inventory crap, get, make sure you know, manage our money, deposit money in the bank, and prepare ourselves, uh, maybe with potions and crap and other various forms of crap and uh, you know, other synonyms for uh, 
you know, various sorts of defecation. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm using the word crap every second word. Uh, so that's, that's probably what we're going to go ahead and do uh, next time. Um, but yeah, for now, if you like the video, you like the content, and you would like to see more of it, go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, leave it a thumbs down. Either way, let me know what you thought in the comment section. And until next time, I'd like to ask you all to game on.